Well, you heard the deal, but what is fueling that Citigroup deal? The Arab nation of Abu Dhabi investing $7.5 in the bank. It could be because oil is near 100 bucks a barrel. Although pulling back $3 today. Yeah, yeah, going down. It's not going getting down. there just yet. <laughs> but this could overall mean that you are funding Middle Eastern investments every time you fill the gas tank in your car. Here now to talk about this, Mike Santoli, senior editor of Barron's. We also have Pat Powell from Powell Financial Group, along with Gary Kaltbaum of GaryK.com, and Peter Schiff from Euro-Pacific Capital and author of the book Crash Proof. There you go. There's the cover of Crash Proof. You always got to show that, right? Um, I'm going to start with Mike Santrelli sure. because from Barron's, he's a new guest on our show. We're thrilled to have you. Glad to be here. Thanks. What do you think? I mean, is there now this direct correlation between filling your gas tank, or was there always a direct correlation with the Middle East? More than ever. Uh, you know, obviously, with oil prices having tripled in a few years, and those nations over there really not incurring too many more costs to actually pull in that dollar revenue, they have a surplus of dollars, and they've, in this organized way, decided to funnel it around the world in investment opportunities. That's obviously made its way back here this time. Yeah, Pat, this isn't the first time something like this is happened. Back right. in 1991, we had Absolutely. Prince Alawid uh, right. given... Right. given Saudi Prince. Exactly. So uh, there have been cases like this before. We overreact. At first shock, it's, gee, are they uh, taking over our financial system? Well, they're not taking over our financial system, but this is a penalty that you pay when you mess up, and clearly Citigroup has messed up in, in here. So they're cheap. It's a smart investment, for, I think, from somebody coming City from, is cheap right it, now. It, city, city is cheap. The deal isn't quite as, as, um, uh, as lucrative as it first sounds. I know they're getting this 11% uh, coupon on the, on the way in, but the convertible rate is at 37.24. So it's a significant premium over what the stock is currently trading at. So Citigroup has to move up for this to be a good deal for the, for the uh, investment authority. Gary Kay, in the 80s, people got extremely hyper about the Japanese buying up 30 Rockefeller Plaza. I mean, that was the big sort of message that people got upset about. Is this just that happening again, only with the Middle East? Uh, absolutely. Look, uh, the Middle East has won the lottery and they win it every day as prices stay high. And I have to tell you, it's capitalism working at its best as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they are leveraging uh, what they have to buy into companies here uh, that are not doing so well. And in my opinion, I think Citigroup may have been on the precipice here in the last couple of weeks. And I think there was an urgent need uh, for $7.5 billion. Just remember, they're, get, they're giving 11 percent. That's not junk. That's double junk. Uh, so that urgent need made this happen and made this happen quickly. Peter Schiff, uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, City was trading at 47, now trading at 30. That's a that's a loss of 85 billion dollars in market cap value. That's a huge loss. Was that down too much, or do you think it could go down even more? Uh, I think it's going a lot lower. I think this is a Band-Aid. Uh, but, you know, I think this is symptomatic. It's not just Americans buying gasoline with borrowed money. What's happened for years, we've squandered our wealth. We've been borrowing money from the world to consume, and now our foreign bankers are cashing in, and they're buying up American assets. And they're going to buy a lot more than just this stake in Citicorp. Who knows? By the time it's over, they might own the whole thing. But they're going to own a lot more of our companies. They might own the majority of the of the, uh, of the uh, Dow Jones before it's over. We have borrowed a fortune from the rest of the world and we can't pay it back and they're going to collect our assets. And okay. Unfortunately, this is a bad thing for America. Let's bring it back to oil and, and Mike Santoli, as you look at uh, what people are now having to spend at the gas pump sure. and it's supposed to get worse, although we haven't seen it yet. Gasolina uh, is at least up ticking about two pennies, down ticking two pennies, yeah. but today crude is down three dollars. Yep. Uh, people are going into debt having to pay their gas bills. And I think that right in the immediate future, the gasoline products like heating oil, uh, petroleum <laughs> products like heating oil and, uh, and gasoline are going to be a squeeze on the consumer. I've been th saying that crude oil was overextended for about four weeks when it was 94, went to 98, back to 94. I do still think that relative to other commodities. Uh, obviously, the weak dollar is giving a prop to that. So it's an economic problem domestically for the moment, but I do think we might get a little bit of psychological relief as crude pulls back in the next couple of months. And, Pat, the, the, one of the reasons that oil is down today is that there is going to be this OPEC meeting right. where they're concerned that the price is so high it's going to put a strain on the economies that buy all their oil, right. so they might increase production, create a little bit they of might. glut to get the prices down. They might, but the long-term trend is still the same. The long-term trend is we keep consuming more oil, not just the United States, but worldwide. And until that trend changes, changes, the long-term trend is still going to be higher in energy, even if we get some pullbacks in the short run. Gary Kay, 
people get touchy, sensitive. We saw that with the Dubai ports deal that never really happened. Uh, that's, a, that's a dangerous thing when we start blocking even the Middle East from trying to buy into U.S. opportunities and companies. Yeah, look, uh, this is a global environment for investing right now. Uh, you can't just say no to everything. Now, the Dubai ports, that was one thing that was about security. I'd say this is a little different. If we start to see more of this, I am sure you're going to hear uh, Chucky Schumer out yelling and screaming about, uh, you hey, know. Hey, a lot of Republicans fought the Dubai ports deal uh, as well. I, I don't, listen, I don't argue that point either. But I'm just saying I think you'll hear a lot of noise if more and more of this happens. But once again, I want to get back to the point. I think this was a lot about urgency here. And I I'm on record. I think within the next 30 days, you're going to hear about another $10 billion fall by the wayside uh, for Citigroup. I do not think they have owned up to all their problems yet, and I think there's a lot more to come. By the but, way, we should mention yeah. that, that Schumer is behind this Citigroup <laughs> right, deal. Peter, you know, Peter, a lot, of, a lot of folks who are in New York are excited about this deal because they think, okay, this protects a U.S. company, including Senator Schumer. Well, it doesn't necessarily protect it. You know, they've got to make that 11% coupon payment, and this is an interest. It's dividend money. It's not even tax deductible, but if they can't make those payments, you know they're they're gonna they're gonna wipe out all the uh, all the common shareholders. This not, this isn't a free lunch. As I said, they might end up owning the entire company. Well, and as Pat said, unless they can get the price up to thirty seven, it's not a good deal. For no, them. it doesn't no, make any sense to no, do the conversion. No, if they can't, yeah. no, if they have. We have to make the coupon payment. If we can't make, yeah, the but coupon Peter, payment, Peter, hold on a second, Peter, yes, Peter, we have to understand what this is here. This is a bet. The Abu Dhabis are making a bet: one, that the price is going to go up to thirty seven, and two, that Citibank is going to no. remain solvent. If Citibank does it remain solvent, as you're suggesting, they lose everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. it depends. That, you know, they it doesn't make depend. They, they make... lose everything if Citibank defaults. That doesn't well, depend. They're, they're, they're in front of the line. They're, they're behind the, the bondholders, but they're in front of all the common shareholders. The stock doesn't have to go up. They get an 11% coupon. For all I know, they want the stock to go down even more so they can buy more of it cheaper. Okay, let, me tell, think... you, let me tell you something shocking, everyone. Fannie and Freddie Mac are moving higher today, mm -hmm. albeit slightly, but federal regulators are giving giving no wiggle room at all from Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac to help the housing market. We'll explain what happened. There's a lot of people unhappy next on Fox Business. So it looks like there's no help on the housing front from Fannie Mae or Freddie. Well, there, that's not fair. There is help right. on the housing front from Fannie and Freddie, but not as much as some would have wanted. Because the loan remains, as far as jumbos are concerned, anything 417000 and above. So will this push the price of homes down further? And we know they're falling anyway. Our Fox panel back now to discuss this. And Mike Santoli, what do you think? Does this only make things worse for home pricing? It doesn't give the housing market marginal help that it could otherwise have given it. I don't think the reason that house prices are going down right now is because Fannie cannot actually buy larger mortgages. It's because the demand for homes is not there. The artificial demand from junk mortgages for people who couldn't afford the homes uh, have gone away. Uh, today's consumer confidence numbers showed only 2.5 percent of respondents were in the market to buy a home as low as it's been since 1994. It's not because of Fannie right. Freddie. Ooh. Peter Schiff, even though Fre uh, Fetty, uh, Freddie, Freddie. Freddie and Fannie, <laughs> <laughs> these two mortgage institutions are up a little bit today. Their market cap is minuscule compared to how many trillions of dollars worth of mortgages and mortgage-backed securities are in their control. Eventually, at some point, doesn't the U.S. Treasury come in and do something to guarantee them beyond the point at which they're already guaranteed? We don't know. I mean, that's why when I wrote in the book Crash Proof that these two companies would go bankrupt, it's because of how small their capital is relative to the mortgages that I knew that they insured that I knew would also go bad. So who knows if that guarantee is actually going to be there. But the problem is, if the government makes good this guarantee and tries to bail out all the bonds, all the mortgage debt... It's impossible. It, it, well, all they can do is print money, and it's going to be worthless when anybody receives it. So it's really not going to be a bailout that does anybody any good. And, you know, remember, home prices that we've had over the past you know, five or six years have been bid up to these artificial levels by these lax lending standards. And, of course, now that these lending standards are coming back to reality, mm -hmm. prices have to follow suit. So prices have to collapse because they weren't real. They were only a function of these crazy okay. loans. Gary Kay, I know a lot of people who are waiting for exactly that, a price collapse so they can come in and finally buy the house that they want mm. at a fair price. Is that the one positive out there with the housing market? I'm trying to look for something positive. <laughs> well, a little well, bit of sunshine. Well, I, I got to tell you, they're going to get it. Look, the market just topped two years ago, and, and in my study of bear markets for housing, 
usually takes about 10 years. That was the last one. And since we had the most ridiculous speculative froth in history in housing, it may take long. And i got to tell you, I've been sitting here watching Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are going to come to the rescue. Freddie Mac just announced a $2 billion loss. Why, do we, why are we going for these people to help out? They can't keep their own house in order. Look, it is a mess right now. Time will cure this. I just think it's going to make, take many years. It's going to continue to be a buyer's market. And what you do right now is go to the auctions, put in some minimum bids, and get some steals because you're going to see a lot of that going forward. The, right. You know, the, the big problem, people keep overlooking how big an impact this housing wealth had on our whole economy, on all the Absolutely. consumption, on, how, on these adjustable rate mortgages, how much extra consumption existed because people were making these minimum payments. So it's not just the housing market, but the entire economy that's going to collapse uh, with the bursting of this bubble. You know, and, Pat, you know, go ahead. You know, I got, you know, I think we're getting way out on, on a limb here. You know, we are in a corrective phase of the real estate market. It's probably not going to be over anytime, anytime soon. And while credit, easy credit and cheap credit has really been a contributing factor, the fact is that a house is not just an investment. It's where you live. So even with prices coming down, people are not flocking to sell their homes and move into apartments. It's where they live. And it's one of the things that's probably going to moderate the decline in, decline in housing. I think the other thing that's really a silver lining, and I know I'm stretching maybe to call it a silver lining here, is there's too much wealth that people are accumulating in homes, and they really need to look at alternate investments. And this, this cheap money made them go more into housing and less into alternative investments. Also on the bright side, 20 to 25 percent of homes bought in the last three years have been investments. They were not actually where people were living. That's a good thing, because that's what? where the foreclosures are happening. Not a good and thing. it's not people losing their homes. No, 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 that's not yeah, but the should people. the taxpayer be bailing out? the speculators? That's not really what's going on. They're, nobody's, they go they're getting on. That's what some politicians are suggesting. They're getting you need foreclosed to do... upon and they're losing the investment. Yeah, they they will have to bolster Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. They cannot let them go under. Those guarantees would have a tremendous ripple effect throughout the entire David? economy, including mortgages. I'm sorry, including well, pensions. So it wouldn't just be isolated to real estate. That could be a catastrophe. There's no doubt we will bail them out. Eric Kay, last word. Yeah, Eric well, Just watch the inventory numbers. They are growing leaps and bounds. I'm here in Florida where there was massive overbuilding. They cannot get rid of product. They're actually tabling product that has been built. It is going to take a while. It is just a fact of life. I'd like to be positive. It's just not there just yet. All right. Well, it is positive, as Liz said, if you're looking to buy something. Oh, I, know, I know a lot of people. It's a matter of whether they'll get credit if it's so tight yeah. at this point. Yeah. Hey, we want to look at the markets here because we do have a situation now. Markets just went down to 199, but they were up 200 points. It's been kind of a seesaw day, but always in the plus side. There it is, above 200. Looking pretty good, Liz. Much of this has to do with a massive monetary injection of about $7 billion to Citigroup from the Middle Eastern nation of Abu Dhabi. And that really sort of added so much buoyancy to the markets overall. Yeah. So let's check in with our Fox panel, beginning with Nicole Petalides at the New York Stock Exchange. Nicole, what's the feel down there? Hi, Liz. You are absolutely right with that injection of cash into Citigroup, that certainly turned sentiment around and giving things a boost. Right off the bat, we saw Citigroup right now is up about 1%. The winners on the Dow are JP Morgan Express, American Express, AIG. Over the last uh, year to date, year to date, but I got to tell you, the defensive plays are the ones that have really held up year to date, and that includes Merck, McDonald's, Coca Cola. It's really unbelievable. We're up 200 points today. None of these traders expected that. They really, for the most part, all expected to see some selling at the end of the day today. I got to tell you, despite all the, the turmoil that we've seen in the capital markets, just wanted to quickly tell you that in the Financial Times, it did say that New York is poised to overtake London in the IPO market for the first time in three years. So there's a little good news for you. Some of the cruise lines doing well. You know, uh, Carnival Cruise did a, an online marketing campaign. That gave that company a boost. Carnival Cruise Lines and also Royal Caribbean up 3% and 2.5% respectively. Now, Goldman Sachs did give a guarded view of some of the um, retailers, including Bed Bath & Beyond and Target and, and Dollar Tree, Cisco, some of these retailers basically saying that they're concerned about the consumer and, and when they may or may not come in. Um, in the, in the near term for these retail stocks. And then they put the knife on the earnings per share for some of the uh, stocks that you like Cheesecake Factory, C-A-K-E, also um, Ruth Chris, so some of these food stocks 
They also put the knife on that one, cutting earnings per share. Once again, a call on the economy and consumer spending. Now, it's also the last but not least, I also wanted to mention Pulte Homes quickly. It's down right now. Pulte Homes standing by its earlier fourth quarter outlook for profit. But uh, basically, it did rise early morning, and we're keeping an eye on Pulte and all the home builders. But really, overall, we do see a broad base rally for the most part. It's really unbelievable. We're up 206 points. Gaining back almost all of our losses from yesterday. Yeah, how about that? That's good news. Well, Peter Schiff, let me go to you. Up 208 points as we speak. Is this a dead cat bounce? Well, it, you know, this, the market you said is buoyant. It's not going to last. I mean, I would expect the market to start heading down maybe as soon as tomorrow. You know, this market is going a lot lower. Uh, and the problem is the dollar is going a lot lower. So that's going to magnify the losses for Americans. And it's going to make today's announcement, you know, more predominant. Foreigners are going to be coming in with their appreciated foreign currencies and buying our assets right out from under us. And this is the price we pay for our extravagance. They're also our buying our economy. products, by the way, in a lot of stores. That's good news. No, no, they're buying their own products back. You know, when foreigners are coming here, they're <laughs> buying no the stuff that they There's no good news from us. your perspective. No. News. I'm Sam trying Foley. to squeeze it out of you. Is Peter correct in, in some of his observations that, that perhaps this is not really real and that we're going to cons cons continue to see the downward shift? Uh, the 200-point bounce is real, but it is a bounce until proven otherwise. I thought we were poised to bounce on Friday. We basically regained yesterday afternoon's losses. What we've proven is that the market can at least seize on some good news to stop the downtrend. What we have to see is the market ignore bad news and rise. That'll tell you that the bad news is fully discounted. Uh, I'm not prepared to say that uh, this bull uh, run is over entirely, but I think it has to prove itself very soon if we're going to conclude that. But by the way, and I'm, I'm taking this from you. I'm going to throw it to Pat because you were <laughs> suggesting during the break that maybe the dollar's bottomed out yeah. when you have people like Ahmadinejad saying it's right. waste paper. Uh, that's right. a good sign. Right. And you, and you go across the board. Everybody's talking about the dollar. When do people talk about the dollar? <laughs> Only when it's way overblown one way or the, or the other. So I, I tend to agree. I think we're probably close to the to a bottom on the dollar, at least on the, on a short term oh. basis. Lee, we've uh, just blasted through the highs of the session here. We're at up 225 points. What does that tell you? Well, it tells us that the market's incredibly volatile. I mean, you know, look what happened yesterday. We had a correction, and now this. And uh, you know, I agree with Mike. I mean, you know, you, you can't really really say anything about that just yet. It's too early. It to prove it. You know, I, I've been well, selling. Ten day. seconds, Peter. I've been selling the dollar for years, and I can tell you it's just getting started. The fundamentals are only getting worse for the dollar. And I don't know why, you know, an American company have, having to go to Abu Dhabi to, bail, Abu Dhabi to bail it out on the verge of bankruptcy is good news. The fact that they got a lifeline, uh, you know, this should be signs of a problem, not something some we people, should be applauding. Some people might agree with that. All right, Peter, thank you very much, and thanks to the rest of our panel. And the closing bell just moments away. The Dow is up 220.